Chairman of Geopolitical Futures, which is an online publication that forecasts the international system. He joins us now live from Austin, Texas. George, great to have you with us. China is getting a head start after this pandemic, while the rest of the world is still battling those lockdowns. What kind of an advantage do you think that this would be in the geopolitical scene? Are we likely to see more aggressive actions from China? I think China has been badly weakened. China is a massive exporter to the United States. As the United States has both the trade war going with it and now a decline in consumption, China's ability to sell the United, to the United States declines. But also, I mean, the data we're getting out of China is not particularly reliable and has never been. So the idea that the rest of the world is floundering with this disease, which we are, uh, and that China is somehow solving it is not particularly, uh, it's hard to believe. And so when we look at China right now, it's in the midst of a major existential crisis because its government is based on the idea that it can manage the system well and between the trade war with the United States, events in Hong Kong, uh, now this, uh, this does not seem like to be a very competent government. The U.S. will likely try to counterbalance, but it's been hit very hard. And after all of this, do you think that the U.S. can still emerge from this pandemic as the sole superpower, especially given the fact that you hear the president speaking more and more and more about nationalistic policies. Uh, there's an Im immigration policy again, trying to put American workers first. And then you have the president saying we need to decrease our dependence on critical supplies during this outbreak that have been made overseas. Well, like the president of Turkey, the president of the United States is responsible for the country he governs. But when you look at nationalism, you really have to look at what's happened in Europe. The borders have come up. Uh, there is no pretense any longer of a genuine European solution to this problem. Uh, Europe is at least as advanced uh, economically and politically as the United States, and it has returned to the old borders that it had. And when you ask the Italians what they think of the Germans, well, not very much. As for the United States, uh, we all are struck by this crisis. But the idea that the United States doesn't remain the largest economy in the world, the largest military, I mean, that, that's not true. But everybody is in a state of shock. And everybody is claiming that uh, somehow the governments have failed, somehow the institutions have failed. We were hit with a pandemic that none of us anticipated, none of us were ready to deal with. All of us have serious problems. And one of the things that came out of this was nationalism, which is the simple statement that. President Erdogan must take care of Turks, President Trump must take care of Americans, and President Xi is trying to take care of Chinese. When you look at Europe, George, which you sort of touched on just now, you have Russia that's been devastated economically, and unity among the EU members is being tested. The EU was not there for Italy in the way that it expected or that it should have been. What do you expect in terms of changes in that region? Well, first of all, we have to understand that Russia exports 30% of its GDP in the form of oil. The collapse of the oil prices cripples Russia's economy. Uh, it hasn't yet played through, so it hasn't been seen, but this is a serious blow to the Russians. As to the European Union, this is the first existential test that the European Union has experienced, and it's failed it, because the president of Germany, the chancellor of Germany, must take care of Germans, and Italians are not the same. So the idea of the European identity is being tested. And what we're finding out that there's a German identity, an Italian identity, a Spanish identity, but the European identity is dissolved. And I think that's one of the most important things this crisis so far has brought out, the fragility of Europe. George Friedman with the Geopolitical Futures. We really appreciate you being with us. Thanks for your analysis.